Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us this far from that beautiful discussion with the government spokesman there concerning food security and the projects that the government is undertaking. We now bring you back to studio and continue with our health segment and right earlier mentioned by Mom Kondo right there. Today we're going to be talking about TB, tuberculosis, to just help you understand the basics, know where we are as a country and how you can be your first line of defense. And as always, we welcome you to be part of this conversation talk to us uh, using the hashtag good morning kenya on twitter our official station handle is at kbc channel one our individual handles ever remain to be at dorina ranke at victor olo at regina minara at ben troinjue and at jane Wumboy. to help us with this conversation in studio we have with us evelyn kibuchi who is the chief national coordinator at stop tb partnership kenya good morning evelyn good morning thank you thank you so much for being with us here you. are you available on the social media platforms yes how can our viewers be able to interact with you um on facebook i'm evelyn kibuchi mm -hmm. and twitter is ikibuchi ikibuchi yes all right so questions that you feel you do, cannot share with us on this national platform feel free to send them to her i believe she will be able to address them as and when that will be possible so tb tuberculosis tuberculosis we all have our own ways that we pronounce this but let's start with the basics when you talk about tb um, we all know it's a disease but what really is tb thank you very much like you rightly said tuberculosis is a disease mm -hmm. it's a disease that is passed from one person to the other through air so we say it's airborne and tb the basics of tb it's airborne mm -hmm. it is passed from one person to the other when an infected person is close to somebody who is uninfected and the infected person breathes out the TB bacteria and it can come out either through talking, through when you're singing or you laugh and the bacteria in you comes out mm -hmm. and then an infected person breathes in that bacteria. That's how it gets transmitted. Airborne. Airborne. Do uh, droplets come into play in this conversation? Saliva droplets and the likes? Th the, the TB is airborne, so it means that the medium mm -hmm. that is carries air. the bacteria is air. Mm. Yes. So droplets not per se. Not per se. All right. It's but, air. All right. So what causes TB? TB is a bacterial disease. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what causes it is that bacteria. When that bacteria gets into the lung of an uninfected person, mm -hmm. that's how it gets infected, one gets infected. Okay, mm -hmm. now when you talk about TB in the Kenyan space, maybe you could just paint a picture for us um, from the information you have gathered working with uh, No TB, Stop TB uh, Partnership KE. How are we faring as a country? Let me first start by saying March, we call it the, the Lung Month. That is when we commemorate or we mark or we remember mm -hmm. the TB and we commemorate the World TB Day on 24th of March. That mm. is just this Thursday. Yes. As a country, I would say we are not doing very well. And I'll start with where are we at the global level. Mm. At the glo global level, we have uh, 80 countries that contribute the highest burden of TB worldwide. Yes. And Kenya is among those, sorry, I said 80 countries. I meant 30 countries mm -hmm. that contribute 80% of the global TB burden, mm -hmm. and Kenya is among those countries. Ooh. That's globally. Let's come to Africa. Africa, we are ranked number four. South Africa comes first, Nigeria comes second, Ethiopia comes third, and Kenya comes fourth. That simply says we are not doing very well mm -hmm. as a country, as far as TB is concerned. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And how recent are these figures? These figures are re as recent as uh, 2020. I'm referring to the data of 2020 mm. according to World Health Organization statistics. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, given there's such high prevalence rates in our country, and one would think we would know like when TB is spreading, but what are some of those signs and symptoms that maybe are presenting themselves in individuals, but we tend to look past them? Uh-huh. Uh, let me first talk about the symptoms of the, the common TB that we know, mm -hmm. the TB that affects the lung. Mm -hmm. What are the common symptoms? The very common symptom that we know is a cough. Mm -hmm. And it's any cough, not a cough for two weeks, not a cough for three months, any cough could be a sign of TB. Loss of weight. And by loss of weight, we mean you 
you lose so much weight in a very short period. Mm. Lack of appetite and sweating a lot at night, especially at night. When and you say sweating in this current weather <laughs> that we are experiencing. <laughs> yeah, the difference is that with this sweat, it's, it's, yes. it's, it's a lot of sweating mm -hmm. and it's more at night. Okay. So that you wake up in the morning and you're looking at the sheet and it looks like, you know, it it's has been soaked wet. in water. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now, I also understand there are two major categories of TB. Mm -hmm. We talk about latent TB and active TB. Help us understand the difference. Yeah. Before we go to the latent and uh, active TB, I want to say that you do not have to wait for all those symptoms that I've talked about mm. to appear. In some people, they could only get one symptom. For example, you could find somebody who only had a cough, but the other symptoms were not as, as prominent. Mm. So somebody could actually ignore because they'll say, I only had a cough. Mm. Other people will only present with night sweats, right? The other symptoms will be there, but they are not so pronounced. So they'll just be saying, the symptoms have many, but I'm just feeling a night sweat. Uh -huh. I'm in a sweat too sana. Exactly. So any of those symptoms that I've mentioned mm. could be TB. Okay. So, latent TB and active TB. Mm. At any point in your lifetime, you must have come into contact with somebody who had TB, right? Maybe you visited someone in hospital mm -hmm. who had TB, or you had just gone to see somebody in hospital, but in the vicinity, there was somebody who had TB, or you traveled in the Matatu. And there was somebody who was in that matatu and had TB, mm -hmm. and they coughed or they talked. The bacteria came out from their mouth, and it lingered in that matatu. So at some point, you may have breathed in, yeah. but you've never suffered from TB, right? So that bacteria that you breathed in and is sitting in your system or in your body, we say you have latent TB. The bacteria is in your system, but you're not sick. So in a sense, it's in um, an inactive state? It's in an inactive state. But it is in your body? But it's in your body. Okay. And that we say a majority of us have that bacteria that is sitting in our body, right? Because like I said, at some point we have been in contact, in contact with somebody who has, who has TB. Yeah. So when does it become active TB? So we have that bacteria that is sitting in you, okay? So they are the factors that make that inactive TB or that latent TB become active. Mm. And it's anything that makes the immunity of your body go low. Yeah? So it could be anything like um, low, low immunity caused by poor nutrition mm -hmm. or any other disease like HIV. Mm. You get HIV, we of course know that HIV brings down your immunity, immunity yes. or you have any other condition like diabetes, mm -hmm. it also brings down your immunity and now it gives an opportunity of that inactive bacteria in you to become active and now you start getting the symptoms, mm. right? Yeah, so it's when your immunity gets compromised that the inactive TB in you becomes active and now you start showing symptoms of TB. And now and you say now you have active, active TB, TB disease. But you can go through your life with the latent TB and it never be triggered. Yes. As long as the constants remain constant mm -hmm. and especially where your immunity is involved. You're right. You could have this Latin TB for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. and you may never get sick. You may never even know that you have this uh, TB bacteria, simply because your immunity has been strong. And is this latent TB also transmittable? No. This latent TB is not transmittable. Okay. That's a good thing about it. Only when it's in its active state, exactly. that's when it can be transmitted yeah. to other individuals. Only when it's in active state, mm -hmm. when you're now coughing, when that bacteria has multiplied in your body, that when you cough, then you release that bacteria. So let's say you are a carrier of this latent TB and then you happen to come into contact with somebody who has active TB. That also triggers your TB to flare up and now shift to the active state? Exactly. You, 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 if you, you could be having that latent TB, mm -hmm. but when you come into contact now with somebody now who has that active TB and you breathe in that bacteria, then you get infected with that disease, okay. with, with the TB disease. How is TB diagnosed? Yeah, TB is diagnosed through uh, two ways. Once you face or visit a facility and you give the symptoms, a, a doctor or the clinician can be able to conclude that you have to be just by listening to the symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. And the other way, which is more reliable, is getting, this, getting the sample 
from your body and it's taken to the to the laboratory and it's 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 checked and then the doctor will say or the lab person will say you have tb which sample blood samples it's sputum, sputum test uh, we 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 test TB through the sputum. Mm. Let me use Kiswahili, kikohozi. Yes. That kikohozi is what is taken to the lab mm -hmm. and uh, they check if there is TB bacteria in that sputum. All right. Now, TB, is it curable? Let's just first get that out of the way. Yes. Thank you. Let's get this out of there yes. because there's a lot of fear that, oh, when I get TB, I'm going to die. Let me give some hope. TB is completely curable but it's on this condition mm -hmm. that you seek treatment early when the t the bacteria has not damaged your system so much mm -hmm. right i repeat that it's curable so long as we seek treatment early if you go when the tb bacteria has damaged your body then chances of you recovering are little that's why we say the moment you feel the onset of any of the symptoms, mm -hmm. do not wait for a single day. All right. Now let's talk a bit about the treatment options that are available in our country when it comes to TB. And I'd like for us to start with the vaccine. BCG. Um, for most of us, I think the last time you talked about BCG was probably in high school <laughs> biology. And we can't even remember that BCG is part of the uh, preventative efforts when it comes to TB. Tell us a bit about that. Okay, when you talk about BCG, then we're talking about prevention and then we shall, we shall go to treatment. Yes. Yeah, I want you to look at your left arm, mm. right? You should Just see a mark. Next to the elbow. Exactly. Yes. You should be able to see a mark. Mm -hmm. And all of us in Kenya have that mark, unless you know, or you're never taken for the BCG. And BCG is a first injection that we are given after birth. Mm -hmm. And BCG is a vaccine that prevents from it that prevents us from getting infected with tb but let me make this clear it only prevents from the more severe forms of tb right not all tb mm -hmm. and even then it does not prevent us for a lifetime okay in yes. most cases it only prevents us uh, up to the age of around 14. Mm -hmm. after that it ceases to be uh, as effective as effective okay exactly now what is the significance of this BCG g being given at birth? Because that is a time where exposure is, um, could be high or minimal depending on the environment. But is there a particular reason as to why it is given at birth? The reason it's given at birth is because we should be protected from TB at birth. And mm -hmm. we are more vulnerable to yeah. tuberculosis when you are young. Because remember, a newborn child has very low immunity. Mm. Therefore, you want this child protected from that time when she's more or he's more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. That's why it's given at birth. All right. And um, considering there hasn't been, uh, let's consider a situation where this particular child hasn't been exposed to TB and they have gotten this particular vaccine. Can this vaccine be given at any other time in life? It can be given at any other point when the child is still a child because mm -hmm. when she has grown up, then um, the, the vaccine is not going to be effective. Ah. That's why the healthcare workers will emphasize that it's given at birth. Before exposure to Before TB. Before exposure to TB. All right. Now, um, yes, so you can go ahead and just, for those who are always wondering about this, Mark, um, always asking, but there are those who this card never really stays. And does that mean that um, they need to get a second vaccine or what does it mean? Because not everyone has that scar. Yeah, when when the when the child is given a vaccine, the doctor or the clinician who administers the vaccine will tell you if it does not cause the scar, come back for, for, for exactly. Mm -hmm. That means if you 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 you'll only not have the mark if you're not taken for a, a second jab. If the first time it never should the mark the scar, yeah. because the scar shows that your body has detected that there's something that has been put in your body mm -hmm. and it's reacting. So when it does not Develop give the immunity. scar, it's showing mm -hmm. that the vaccine is not active. That's why you need to be given another one ah. immediately. Then now the, the healthcare worker realizes that there's no... The scarring did the not scarring, take yeah, place. Exactly. All right, so that's the first line of defense, you exactly. know, at birth, whenever TB is involved. That's now, yeah, let's the, come the first to... Prevention. Yes, the first mm -hmm. preventative measure. Mm -hmm. Now, you are a bit exposed, you know, knowingly or unknowingly. What are the treatment options that are available, and especially in the Kenyan space? 
Yeah. TB treatment is the same all over the world. Mm -hmm. As in that the chemical composition of TB is standard. Is standard. Okay. Whether you're in Cambodia, in Kenya, in Uganda, it is the same. And um, it is, TB treatment is given for a period of six months. And the amount of drugs, right, the, the number of pills depends on the body weight. Mm -hmm. So once you go for the medication, the healthcare worker will take your weight and that is what will determine how many pills that you're going to be given. The more the weight, the more the number of, of, of pills, mm -hmm. right? But the treatment is standard. It's standard. It's standard. Now, um, there was a, I was going through an article and there's a point where it talked about surgery in some cases. And I don't know how true, uh, truthful that is. Is there any, um, at any point where surgery comes into play whenever TV's, TB is involved? Um, you, for me to respond to that, I will have to talk about the different types of TB we have. Mm -hmm. We have uh, two types of TB. We have the pulmonary TB, in simple terms, is a TB that affects the lungs. Mm -hmm. And we have TB that affects any other part of the body, apart from the three parts, the hair, mm -hmm. the teeth, and the nails. Okay. So when, when TB up, uh, happens outside the lung, what we call extra pulmonary TB, mm -hmm. then depending on where it is, then the doctor may determine whether surgery may be required. Ah, exactly. All right. That's why we hear TB of um, the spine, the spine. For example. Ah. Yeah. Now those are the cases that surgery could become a treatment option exactly. depending on the extent. Exactly. All right. But we're also living in a time where people are developing resistance. You know, antimicrobial resistance is a whole um, pandemic in its own. And we also have TB resistance. In the Kenyan space, is this a big challenge? Oh yes, drug resistance TB, let me first say it's a challenge worldwide. Yes. And in Kenya, it's a very serious challenge. And how does it come about? Tell us. We all know it's very difficult to finish a dose of medication anytime you're given. Swallowing pills. Exactly. <laughs> and because maybe you're given you to take for seven days, but mm -hmm. on the fourth day you're feeling better, right? Yes. Or sometimes you feel like, the, 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 you don't feel nice, you, the, you're, you don't feel good when you take the pills. And mm -hmm. so after three, four days, you stop, okay? Oh, you just forget. Oh, you just forget. <laughs> but in most cases, we just, fo we just feel, I'm feeling okay, I don't have to continue with the pills. Yes. So what happens is that your body, now that you have given your body a dose of this medication, mm -hmm. but it has, not comp it has not destroyed the bacteria, right? So the bacteria becomes resistant to the drug that you have given it because you did not destroy it, but you have given it a bit of a dose of the medicine. Mm, so but it wasn't in the quantities that is needed to destroy, to destroy it the bacteria. Exactly. Right. So the same thing happens in TB. Mm -hmm. You're given the medication, but for one reason or the other, you do not complete the dose, the six months dose, or you do not, you're not consistent with the, with the medication. Maybe you're told to take so many pills uh, every morning, but mm. you skip the, the doses. So what you've done to the bacteria is that you've given it a bit of dose, but you've not destroyed completely. So it becomes resistant to that drug. What that means is that even if you continue giving it the same drug, it is not going to get cleared. Mm. And you have to be given a more strong set of antibiotics now to destroy it completely or to kill it completely. That's when we say you have become drug resistant. Oh, right. Wow. So drug resistance happens when one, we do not complete our dose mm -hmm. or we do not take the medication according to the doctor's instructions. Okay. And I would want to emphasize here that when you're on TB treatment, you must complete the dose and you must follow the instructions from the uh, doctor or the healthcare worker. And in the event that for you forgot or you traveled and you forgot to carry your medication, when you go to, when you go to the healthcare worker, remember to tell them be very honest because mm. this could save you from getting drug resistant okay. always be very honest say on this date i did not uh, take my take my medication and every time you remember that you have uh, skipped a dose con uh, contact your healthcare worker and tell them that you have skipped a dose but let's ensure that we complete and we follow the doctor's instructions let me talk about the drug res the, the drug resistant tb or what you call the drtb mm -hmm. First of all, it takes a long time to treat it. 
any period between 18 months, 24 months. That's about wow. two years. Yeah. And you have to take drugs, quite a, a number of pills, every day for those two years. Initially, the treatment used to be administered through injections. Mm. And these injections took six, six, six months. But right now, at least with advancement in, in, uh, in research, we, uh, we have uh, drugs that is administered through pills. So we have done away with injections, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. But again, it's very expensive you, on you as a patient and also as a country because the government will have to cater for you, for the treatment for you, and it's very expensive. Right now it takes between uh, 1.5 and 1.8 million to treat one case of drug-resistant TB. It's also very involving because the healthcare worker has to observe that you have taken the pills. So that healthcare worker either comes to your home mm -hmm. or you go to the to healthcare the health worker yeah. so that he makes sure that you have swallowed the drug. Because in the first place, remember how you got the, the drug resistant. So we want to make sure that you do not fall into the same, in the, into the same problem again. And um, yes, yeah, so that we do not create more drug resistance. Um, that's why because of that, um, that involvement of treatment, the patients who get drug resistant are given an allowance to facilitate them to go to the healthcare worker mm -hmm. or for the healthcare worker to come for treatment. And there's another level which is XDRTB. Mm -hmm. When now the drug resistant TB becomes resistant to that treatment, then it, it advances to another level called the extensively drug resistant TB, which takes longer and is also more expensive. And the symptoms keep manifesting as long as exactly resisting these drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, there's an article that I came across here that was looking at the global figures when it comes to TB. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is from the World Health Organization. Um, just back in 2020, again, the same year, they estimated some 10 million people fell ill with tuberculosis, 5.6 million being men, 3.3 million being women, and 1.1 being children. Given this high number of men against women, almost double, is there a relation to gender when it comes to um, exposure to TB or the uh, level, it's a level playing field? Yes, no, there is there, there are gender issues when it comes to TB infections. Like you have rightly said, globally, mm -hmm. according to the 2022 statistics, 56% of those who were infected with TB were men, mm -hmm. 33 were women mm -hmm. and 11% were children. children. In Kenya, a survey was conducted in 2016, and the results were the same. That out of every two people, out of um, out of one woman with TB, there were two there were two, two men. men against. That means that men are more vulnerable to TB than women, and that makes us have a more focus. That that makes us have. Uh, focus more mm -hmm. on men and why are men more vulnerable though no research has been done to concretely say these are the reasons we can only speculate mm -hmm. and one one issue with men if you look at the way of life how they work the situations in which they work mm. they place them to be more vulnerable for example you go to factories even now if you go to a matatu you like to get more men, more than, men than women, than women. Yeah. you go to football you go to the drinking places there are more men than women so if one man is infected among them then there are chances that more are going to be infected okay secondly this is this is common among men they don't like going to hospital right <laughs> so they get the symptoms and they go over the counter and they buy painkillers and they you know self-medicate self-medication exactly <laughs> some may hear you take a shot of vodka and then yeah. the cough is going to clear but so that delay that not going to that not seeking healthcare among men places men in a more vulnerable position for getting infected with TB. And so I would want to address men for today and tell them, you understand now that you're more vulnerable to TB. And if TB is not cured, it kills. So for men, any moment you get any, any of the symptoms that I mentioned, do not wait, do not self-medicate, do not borrow medication from your friend, simply go to a healthcare worker, go to a facility, 
get treated. Because right. once you get treated, you also protect your loved ones, mm. you protect your family. But so long as you're not treated, you're also exposing your loved ones to tuberculosis. All right. Victor Mali and Bapo Lipo, I hope you have heard that clarion call. Men, you have a... We, women have a higher sense of self-preservation than men. So, kisikia unakohoa kidogo, kimbia spitali. Mesikia vikita. Na kimbia wapi? Spitali. All right, now let's talk a bit about um, the relationship that TB has in line with some other medical conditions that have been noted to sort of have a relationship. And I want us to start with where we are as a population, globally speaking, COVID-19, the pandemic, is also affects the respiratory system. Is there a relationship between these two that could make TB worse? Yeah, there's a relationship and of course there are differences. I'll start with the differences that mm. TB is caused by a bacteria. COVID is caused by a virus, mm. huge difference. Viral bacteria. Exactly. But what are the similarities? Sorry, both diseases affect the lung. Mm -hmm. Both diseases have sort of a common symptom. You know, the cough, the general weakness, the pain in the lung. Mm. So in, in, in quite a number of cases, uh, TB has been mistaken for COVID and COVID has been mistaken for TB. TB. And the, the, the effect that TB, that COVID had on um, COVID, that COVID had on TB response globally is that it really affected TB response. And we have been thrown back to where we were 10 years ago mm. in TB response. Why so? When COVID came, most of the resources, the health, the health workforce, the facilities were 360 degrees redirected to, uh, to, to COVID. Mm. Again, there was a lot of stigma. Remember, in Kenya, when, the, when COVID came, mm. if you coughed, ah. ambulance, you are taken to an isolation, which you had to pay for yourself. And of course, people were afraid that if I have COVID, I'm definitely going to die. Mm -hmm. So people had a lot of self-stigma, right? And they also stigma, stigma around. Yes. So even if I had a cough, I was not going to tell anybody that I have a cough because they say, hey, mm. you have COVID, mm. okay? And they're also afraid of going to hospital because in case it's COVID, of course there were repercussions. Yes. So um, many people did not go to, to hospital. And this caused us to regress as a country. Exactly. This caused us to go back to where we were 10 years ago. Mm. And um, we, we are trying to recover slowly. And by encouraging what we are calling bidirectional screening, mm -hmm. that means um, when I go for COVID screening, then I'm also tested for TB. Mm. And when I go for TB, I'm also screened for COVID. For COVID. Okay. And that is um, it's a cost-effective way of addressing the two the two pandemics. To avoid uh, going down the wrong path, especially when it comes to the treatment. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Now and, and also the fact that uh, because of the, the similarities in, mm. in, in the symptoms, so when I'm presenting for COVID, it could be TB, right? And when I'm presenting for TB, it, it could, could be, be COVID. COVID. Yeah. So the only sure way is that let me be tested for both. For both. And I would make this a clarion call that when you have any of those symptoms, mm. be screened and tested for both diseases. For both of them. Again, that's why we like to understand this relationship between these two. Mm -hmm. Now the other one is uh, the relationship between HIV and, A HIV and TB. We have known for the longest time that TB is one of the opportunistic diseases that really affect the population that have the virus. Why is it um, one of the biggest challenges when it comes to this particular part of the population? Okay, first of all, I would want to, spell, to dispel the rumor mm -hmm. that anybody who has TB has HIV. Yes. And I want to send this, this record straight with statistics. Mm -hmm. Only about 25% of people with TB have HIV. Yes. Only 25%. What does that tell us? That about 75% of people with TB do not have HIV. HIV. Yes. That should come as a consolation. So when you see somebody coughing or when somebody tells you they have TB, let us not automatically conclude that they are HIV positive. Mm. They are not. And there's a whole huge difference. And I'll talk about again the difference and the similarities. Yes. HIV is a virus. Again. TB is a bacteria, mm -hmm. is a bacterial infection. Huge difference. But what are, the, what are the converging points between the two? It's simply because HIV is known to bring our immunity down. Mm. And so TB takes Thrives. advantage of 
that lower immunity. Mm. That is the only relationship. That means if you have HIV and you get TB, then the symptoms of the HIV are likely to be feasible more. Mm. Okay. Right? And you have, if you have TB and you get HIV, then um, the HIV in you will accelerate the, the progress of TB in mm. you. Right? Yeah. All right. Now, diabetes as well. Mm -hmm. That is uh, one of the areas that actually you pointed out. Um, what is the relationship between TB and diabetes? Again, it boils down to the immunity, mm. right? It has, been sh it has been discovered that uh, most patients with, most people with diabetes, I do not call them patients because TB is just a condition. I mean, diabetes is just a condition. Mm. People with diabetes have been, have, have been not, have been discovered to be getting TB. That means uh, diabetes has also been known to bring about conditions that make TB to thrive more. Okay. Right? And now we're also calling for the same, let me use the word bidirectional, for lack of a better term. But that means that once, you, once you're going for, for diabetes checkup, that you should always be checked for TB. Mm. And also when you go for TB, you should also be tested for for, for diabetes okay. because you have found that there's, there's that correlation. But again, simply because diabetes will make uh, TB thrive better. Mm, it's sort of a gateway. Exactly. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Now, I want us to address the, some of the misconceptions that um, are going around when it comes to TB. And I'll start with one that you mentioned, um, that TB is inheritable. It's hereditary. It, it, yes, that, that's one of the biggest misconception and a myth yeah and why do people think so it's because you may find more than one person in the family having tb mm. and how did it come about it's simply because they're living in the same environment exposure exactly and one person exposed their entire family mm -hmm. and so when people see more than one person in a family with tb then they conclude when i say ma he in a, in a run kwa familia mm. that it runs the family TB is not hereditary. It is not genetic. It's simply airborne. All right. Now, there's also a huge chunk that believes TB is a direct death sentence. I mean, we had campaigns going around say TB na TB, but for most people still believe that TB is a death sentence. TB is not a death sen 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 sentence completely. TB is curable. Mm -hmm. And statistics show us, like in Kenya, the, the, the treatment success rate for TB is about 89%. Mm -hmm. That means 89% of the people who get TB will get cured. And the only reason why TB may not be cured is when we delay seeking treatment yes. or when you do not adhere to treatment. Okay. Otherwise, if we seek treatment early, we adhere to our treatment, TB is completely curable with simple drugs which are administered for six months and TB, its treatment is, is completely free in government facilities. Okay. So there's a lot of hope. There's posi uh, positive things around CB. All right. Now, as we bring this conversation to a close, let's talk a bit about those challenges that uh, we face when it comes to the treatment of TB. And number one is this habit that we have as people to self-medicate with over-the-counter medication. Unasikia kitwe inauma paracetamol. Unasikia unakohoa kidogo, niko naif lugo, na hapa nikisikia mapo inafanya like this, like that. We always go over-the-counter to self-medicate. Okay. I'll talk about that and also talk about what can we do to prevent yes. ourselves from getting infected. Briefly as we exactly. compress it into... Uh -huh. Something First brief. of all, let's completely avoid self-medication for any disease, right? That's why we have doctors. That's why doctors are paid mm -hmm. to take care of our health. So headaches, cough, whatever it is, stomachache, let's not over-med, let's not self-medicate, let's not go for the counter, let's not go to herbalist, let's seek proper medication. Number yes. two, how do we prevent ourselves from uh, TB? First of all, the BCG vaccine for children, that's a must. Secondly, proper nutrition. If our bodies, if, if we are feeding well, if our bodies are well nourished, mm. then we reduce chances of getting infected. Uh, living in well ventilated, ventilated uh, conditions, opening windows in our houses, in our offices, in, our, in the matatus. Mm. Um, the other thing is when you have an infected family member, ensuring that they are on treatment, because that again uh, prevents us from contracting, uh, the contracting the, disease. Yeah. And, um, yeah, for those who get the symptoms, quickly get treated. 
that's a sure way of us reducing new infections and creating awareness. I really mm -hmm. like what KBC does. Educating people because why would somebody die of a disease that's a curable? It's simply because they did not know in the first place that what they were suffering from is tuberculosis. Yes. They don't know that it's curable. But today I want to give people hope that TB is curable and um, so long as we seek treatment. Let's not die of diseases that don't have treatment and die of diseases that can be treated. Let's pick our battles. <laughs> yes, All right. let's choose our battles. As we close this conversation, there is your camera, just your clarion call, your call to action message to each and every individual who is watching us today. Again, just looking at all those aspects of uh, creating more awareness, stopping these habits of self-diagnosis, nutrition, readjusting our lifestyles. What would be your message to our viewers today? My first message would go to the government of Kenya, and I'll precisely address the president. Um, we have very, very ambitious targets of ending TB by the year 2030. Mm. But when we look at the funding situation of TB in this country, it is, it, 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 it is bad. I was looking at the statistics of TB financing according to WHO report, and I saw 47% of our TB response is unfunded. And there's no way we are going to hit our targets of ending TB if we are having a program that is have a deficit of 47%. I know the government is going to be reading the budget in, in the next few it's days. Coming month, yeah. Exactly. What we'll be looking forward to is one, at the county level, ensuring that the counties invest in TB mm -hmm. and the national government also puts money into TB. And on this, I should have mentioned that we have 10 high burden counties that carry the highest burden yes. of TB, in, TB our country. in the country. Starting with Nairobi, Kiabu, Nakuru, Meru, Rodua, Machakos, Isiolo, Meru, among others. Mm -hmm. I would specifically want to address to the governors of those counties to ensure that we bring down the infections by investing TB. And to the general Kenyans, please do not self-medicate. Seek health care and support those who are on treatment. Let us not stigmatize anybody who has a cough thinking it's COVID. Even if it's COVID now, we know it's, it's, it's treatable, it's manageable. Mm -hmm. Support those people who are on treatment. And finally, let's spread the message of TB. Now we know the symptoms. We know, you know, we know how TB is treated. Yes. Let's tell, let's spread this message. Tell the next person to tell the next person. And if every 53 million of Kenyans are aware of TB symptoms, then we are going to bring down infections of TB. Beautifully put. Nothing to add on to that. We have been speaking with Evelyn Kibuchi, who is the Chief National Coordinator working at a Stop a TB Partnership Kenya. Thank you so much for making time to be with us today. Thank you so much for giving the opportunity. Kari Busana. Now, with that, we want to call it a program. Thank you so much for being with us. That is all we had lined up for you today, but be sure to join us again tomorrow morning. My name is General Boy. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. Bye-bye for now.